which one should you be using? No fuss, no problems, it just works. I don't buy it. I don't think it's a good idea, but... Today, we are going to explore and compare the major infrastructure as code type of tools, or what we called in the past configuration management tools. The goal is to give you sufficient information to be able to choose which one should fit your use cases, which one should you use. Think of it as a competition and we will have seven competitors in the race. There is CF Engine. If you've never heard about CF Engine, that means that you haven't been in this industry long enough. Then we have Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Terraform, Pulumi, and Crossplane. Seven competitors, isn't that amazing? But we have a problem, and that problem is my upbringing. I was told never to speak ill of the dead, since dead cannot hurt us, and they cannot defend themselves Speaking ill, saying something bad about that is bad taste and not really a good idea. Now you might be wondering why am I talking about that? And to answer that question, I need to explain the status of the tools I mentioned. CF Engine, one of the first tools of the kind, is dead. Nobody is using it, at least nobody who has any choice in the matter. Chef died as well. Puppet died as well. Those are all dead technologies. And then we have Ansible. Ansible is not dead, but it is on life support. It is like a person in a hospital lying in bed and the only thing that keeps him alive is a machine that pumps uh, oxygen and the food and water into the body. That person normally is visited by friends and family, just like Ansible. Ansible has friends and family. But as time passes, less and less of people are coming for a visit and eventually that person in that hypothetical hospital will have no visitors, nobody to pay the bills and then the hospital will turn the machine off and that will be the end of it. The same thing can be said about Ansible. Ansible is not dead, there are people using it, but it is on life support. Its days are numbered, so I will consider it dead as well. And that means that we have only three participants left in the race. The competition did not even begin and we have already disqualified four of them on the grounds that they are dead. So we are left with Terraform as undisputable leader in the space of infrastructure as code. It has most likely the biggest following, the biggest number of users, healthy community and what's or not. Then we have Pulumi, which is a newcomer, which tries to change, to shake the industry we're going to see whether that's successful or no. And finally, Crossplane. That's the newbie in the block. That is the last tool to appear in the market and it pretends to take over the market, just as Pulumi does. So we are going to have a race, a competition between only those three, Terraform, Pulumi and Crossplane. We are going to compare those three based on different criteria. The first one is requirements. What are the requirements to run any of those tools? Then the syntax, how do we define infrastructure using each of those tools? Is that good? Is that bad? Do we like it? Maybe we don't. Third one is the ability to provide a plan to allow us to review the changes before they happen. And then we have the most important function of each of those tools and that is to create, update or destroy infrastructure. Further on, we are going to take a look how do they behave in CI-CD tools, in pipelines, in workflows that are supposed to automate our processes. After that, we are going to jump into drift detection and synchronization. From there on, we are going to move into potential ability of those tools to comply with GitOps principles. And finally, we are going to see how big of a support they have within its own or broader ecosystem. How many libraries do they have, how good documentation is, how much support from the community, and how well do they fit into broader ecosystem. That's it. Those are the rules of the competition and we are about to start now. We are going to compare those three tools in 20 minutes or less. At least that's the idea. It might take longer, we'll see, but the goal is to explore them in 20 minutes so that you don't waste too much of your time. From the requirements perspective, each three of those require us to use a CLI, 
Actually, Crossplane doesn't need a CLI. It's helpful if you install plugin for kubectl, but let's say that CLI is good. So each of those has a CLI. That's fine. Every single tool has a CLI. There's nothing special there. Now, when the differences about the requirements become slightly more apparent is in the storage uh, where those tools store the state that they need in order to do the work that they're doing. For Terraform, that state can be stored locally on a remote drive or in cloud. For Pulumi, cloud is the primary way to store the state. I think that there is a way to store it somewhere else, not only on cloud. From that perspective, Terraform and Pulumi are very similar. There is no big difference. Now for Crossplane, the state is stored in etcd because Crossplane runs inside of Kubernetes. And that could be a problem for some. Some people might say, hey, I do not want to have a Kubernetes cluster to run a tool like Crossplane. I prefer just Terminal, Terraform Apply, Pulumi up, and I'm done with it. And I understand that. On the other hand, Kubernetes is commoditized today. You can spin up Kubernetes cluster almost as easily as anything else. We can use Docker Desktop, we can use Minikube, we can have a dedicated cluster for orchestration of our infrastructure. Creating a Kubernetes cluster is not a big deal. It can be done in a matter of minutes, unless you want to make it more serious and then it might take a bit more. But in any case, Kubernetes is not a big deal. Just execute Minikube start and you have a Kubernetes cluster and install Crossplane. Nevertheless, it is more complicated than the other two. Having Kubernetes as a requirement is definitely a bigger deal and potentially bigger obstacle than the obstacles we have to start working with Terraform and Pulumi. From that perspective, Crossplane is a loser and Terraform and Pulumi can be considered winners. Let's switch into the syntax and for that I need to start sharing my screen. From now on everything will be hands-on. This is my terminal split into four sessions. The first one, the top left, will be for Terraform, the top right for Pulumi, the bottom left for Crossplane, and the bottom right for nothing, really. I don't have the fourth tool, so it will be for my pretty face. So fourth terminal is my pretty face. Look at it. Amazing, right? Terraform uses uh, HCL, and the definitions look something like this. It is similar to... I'm not sure what it's similar to. Anyways. We define different resources, and each resource has certain values that we can change, like name, project, location, what's or not. Based on my experience, most of the time, those definitions are very declarative. Hey, there is some uh, property, and then there is some value, and then some other property, and some other value, and so on and so forth. Very declarative. And eventually, we might need to do something more imperative, like conditionals. In this case, this says, hey, if min node count is greater than zero, then use the value of min node count, otherwise use one, right? If nobody defined what the number of nodes is, by default it's one, and otherwise use whatever the value is. Now, I know very well that I could have defined uh, the default value in values file in Terraform. I just wanted to show you a simple example of a conditional. There could be loops. There could be many similar constructs that are not really declarative. And then we end up in a weird situation where primarily declarative format for defining something needs to be used in a not so declarative way, in a kind of imperative way. But from my experience, and yours might be different, vast majority of what we do is declarative and eventually we might need to dive into more imperative way to do stuff through conditionals, loops, what's or not. So if we ignore those conditionals and other constructs, it is pretty straightforward, declar as declarative as it can get. My only complaint here is, one, that it's not YAML. I really don't understand why HCL. Uh, as I said before, there might be good reasons. I just cannot comprehend them. And two, when I need to do something that is not declarative, that is very weird and silly, like in this case. Those are the two major issues. Hopefully, most of you do not care that it's HCL, and most of you probably do not have significant amount of things that are not declarative. And in that case, this fits pretty well. Now, if you look at Pulumi, Pulumi uses general purpose languages. I'm using Go today, but the same would apply to Python, to JavaScript, what's or not. And we have something like this. If you pay attention, you will see that this is very similar to how Terraform defines stuff. 
we have some function. This is very proprietary to uh, Pulumi, to how programming works. And then we have very declarative approach to doing things. Like, hey, this is a name and this is the value. Now, since this is Go, we need to convert that value to from pure string to something else, but that's a Go thing. And we have location, we have min master version. The same declarative approach as in Terraform, except that I do not understand why would they use declarative approach to work in Go, except for uh, code complete, which is definitely much better. But other than that, no advantage that I can see here except complications. Now, the good part of using Go are those conditionals. Like here, I have a real if statement. This is much better, much more readable to me than those silly things like in Terraform. So when we have conditionals, loops, what's or not, imperative approach to things, Pulumi shines. For declarative approach, it just complicates things without any significant value added. And as I mentioned before, it really depends how much you have of declarative versus imperative. Uh, if you have more of one, then you might want to go towards Terraform. If you have more of the other, you might want to go towards Pulumi. The third one is cross-plane. And if I show you here this one, this is a pure Kubernetes resource. We are defining resources in exactly the same way as we would define anything else in Kubernetes. It has API version and the kind and in this case, I'm creating GK cluster, and then I'm creating a node pool. Actually, this, this scenario is exactly the same in both of them, right? So the major difference is that this is a Kubernetes resource. This is pure YAML. Now, there is no templating. There is no value substitution like in Terraform, and there is no programming language like in Pulumi that can help us with those things in a native way. And that could be a big downside of uh, crossplane. But that would be true only if we ignore the fact that the cross-plane works in Kubernetes. And that means that we can tap into the ecosystem of Kubernetes to accomplish the things like substitutions of values, conditionals, what's or not. So we could accomplish the same result like in Terraform and Pulumi by using Helm, for example. We could template our cross-plane definitions using Helm. We could use Customize. We could use JSONnet and so on and so forth. So we can accomplish the same things we could accomplish with Terraform and Pulumi and potentially much better if we assume that it is okay to use Kubernetes ecosystem. And it almost certainly is because you're almost certainly using Helm or Customize or JSONnet or something like that for your applications running in Kubernetes. So why not for Crossplane as well? And then the sides turn all of a sudden because if we do use the ecosystem of Kubernetes and Kubernetes CLIs in this case, then the options are much wider and potentially much better than with the other tools for a simple reason because defining things is A, standard. It is a typical Kubernetes definition that we can use in the same way as we are using to define our applications. So that means one API, Kubernetes API for everything, one way to define manifests for everything, infrastructure or something else like applications, and the same set of tools, whichever tools we choose to use templating or overlays or what's or not, we can use for Crossplane as well. So Crossplane itself is very limiting compared to Terraform and Pulumi, but if you use it as part of a wider ecosystem that we already adopted for Kubernetes, then actually it is potentially much more powerful than what the other two offer for a simple reason, because the other two assume that they are going to build the whole ecosystem and Crossplane assumes that it is part of potentially, not potentially, the biggest ecosystem we knew in the history of software engineering. Ultimately, there is no winner here because it depends on preferences. Do you like HCL? Yes, great, use Terraform. Do you prefer to write in a programming language like Go, Python, JavaScript, what's or not? Then Pulumi is great. If you would like to define all your resources in the same way, no matter whether that is infrastructure or applications or whatever else, then Kubernetes manifests are the way to go. So I might say actually that Crossplane has a slight edge here, but nevertheless, it's a tie for now. Now let's take a look how we can preview the changes uh, in those tools, how we can find out what will happen before it happens. In case of Terraform, since this is the first time I'm using it, 
in this project I need to initialize Terraform and then we can do something like Terraform plan. And Terraform plan gives us information about what will happen if we apply those manifests, if we apply our desired state to the actual state. And we can see what will change. In this case, this is the first time I'm running it. So it is telling me what will be created. There will be four resources added. Nothing will change and nothing will be destroyed. Similarly, with Pulumi, we can do Pulumi preview and diff to get a detailed output of the preview. And then the output is very similar to Terraform. Come on, go on. Here we are, right? It is a slightly different format, but it gives us all the details what will be created. In this case, four resources will be created as well. Now, for cross-plane, there is no such option. We cannot see what will happen before it happens. We need to rely on testing and we need to rely on our knowledge to assume that, hey, whatever we apply is actually what we really want. Now, that is a big downside of cross-plane, and I must say that it is a loser of this round as well. We cannot see what will happen before it happens. Now, let's see how it works if we want to apply those changes, if we want to create something, update something, destroy something. In case of Terraform, we execute Terraform apply. I will provide here the project ID variable, because I did not hard-code it into the values, and here we are. Similarly, for Pulumi, we can do Pulumi up and then dash dash diff. And we get, in both cases, preview, what we already explored in the previous round. And then we can say, yes, I want to do that with Terraform. Yes, I want to do that with Pulumi. And in case of crossplane, we do qcuttle apply dash dash file name and whatever is our manifest. Now, for crossplane, we could have done the same thing using Helm. We could use customize. You could, we could use any of the tools we normally use to apply changes to our Kubernetes cluster, except that we are now applying changes to the resources inside of Kubernetes cluster, which will create our infrastructure, services, or what's or not. Now, as you can see, in Terraform and Pulumi, we are seeing the output directly. In case of crossplane, we do not know what is happening from the output of kubectl apply, simply because that's the Kubernetes way how to do stuff. Uh, we, everything is asynchronous, which is which might be a good thing. Now, if you want to consult the progress, we can describe, like we can describe GK cluster DT crossplane, and we can see all the events and what is happening. And we could also describe the other resource that I am creating, like node pool. Uh, I do not remember the name. DT crossplane, I think. I think, yeah. And then we can also get the status of our resources in case of crossplane by querying Kubernetes cluster as we do for anything else. Like I can do watch kubectl get GKE clusters and node pools. And we can see the progress, right? Uh, one is being provisioned and the other one will be provisioned very soon as well. This will take a while until it is finished. So I will just fast forward to the end of the process. Let me use this opportunity to let you know that uh, the gist with all the commands is in the comments, in the description of this video. So if you want to do the same things that I'm doing right now, you can do it, just follow the gist. But let me warn you that I had to choose the provider, so I'm doing everything in GKE, in, actually in Google Cloud. You would need to adapt to the commands if you would like to replicate the same somewhere else in AWS, Azure, Alibaba, whatever you're using. That's it, it's finished. And if I would like to confirm that everything works correctly, I would need to create a kubeconfig file for each of those. Now I can see that in all three cases, here is one cluster, kubectl get nodes. It created the nodes, same thing. Kubectl get nodes here as well. We can see three nodes over there. We should in a second, and kubectl get nodes here as well. So all three did the same thing. The major difference is that Terraform and Pulumi run from wherever we want it to run and they are synchronous processes. They can be made asynchronous, but by default at least they are synchronous processes. While Crossplane is following the logic of Kubernetes in general that it created an event that told the, the API to do something and then the API responded with, I understood what you want. And the rest is asynchronous. 
We need to watch the processes if we want to see what is happening instead of waiting until that something really happens. The final outcome is the same. All three tools created what they needed to create or updated what needed to be updated and so on and so forth. Except that cross-plane is asynchronous and it is happening in a Kubernetes cluster and the only thing we can do is consult the cluster to see the state instead of uh, waiting uh, for that something to happen. Now, if we would like to update, all we would have to do is change any of those definitions and repeat the process. I will not go through it because it's very basic. We just change the manifests, HCL in case of Terraform, Go code or whichever programming language you use for Pulumi and uh, YAML definitions for crossplane and apply them and then the change would happen after a while. Similarly, if we remove something from a definition or if we remove the definition itself, those tools will detect that something is gone and that it should be destroyed and it, they will destroy those things. So there is probably potentially no good reason to show you how updates work. They are exactly the same as how creation of stuff works and, and how destruction of stuff works as well. Now, if we jump into CICD, all three are also essentially the same because all three allow us to execute CLI commands that will do stuff. And all we would have to do is repeat those same commands in our CI/CD pipelines or workflows. Like, hey, this would be Terraform apply and Pulumi up and uh, kubectl apply. In the case of Crossplane, all three of them are equally easy or hard to plug into CI/CD systems. So there is really no significant difference between the three. Now let's jump into another category and that is drift detection. I want to see whether each of those tools is capable of detecting that there is a difference between what is defined and what is really running. Will they be able to detect the drift and will they be able to synchronize the desired state with the change actual state? To do that, I will go to GCP UI or console and destroy node pools. I want to see how those tools behave when I do something by accident, when I destroy, let's say, a node pool. So this is my GCP console. I will open all three of them. And for each of them, I will do exactly the same thing. I will go to the nodes and destroy the node pool. I will destroy worker nodes in all three clusters. Here and here. And the third one is going to do exactly the same. I will skip to the end of the process when those node pools are deleted and we're going to see how those tools behave. There we are, all the nodes are gone. No more. I did a manual action to destroy stuff and uh, let's see how those tools help me detect that drift. With Terraform, we can do Terraform apply and I need that same variable project ID equals project oh project id and terraform will tell me probably what's going on similarly for pulumi i can do pulumi refresh to get the state from cloud and then pulumi up dash dash diff i'm ignoring crossplane you will see why very soon so terraform is telling me hey one needs to be added, one resource is missing. That node pool that I destroyed, do you want to create it? Right here you see the differences, plus, plus, plus. One needs to be added. Yes, somebody accidentally did something they shouldn't without changing Terraform. I detected the drift, do you want me to fix it? Yes. Similarly, Pulumi is telling me the same. Hey, there is a drift, one resource is missing because you were silly and destroyed it yourself manually. Do you want me to fix that? Yes, as well. And now both tools, both Terraform and Pulumi are working to reconcile the drift. They're fixing the differences between the desired and the actual state. In case of crossplane, there is nothing for me to do. Absolutely nothing, because if you paid attention to my screen instead of to my face, you probably noticed that there was no nodes, nodes were destroyed, and then crossplane detected the drift and recreated the node pool. And this is huge. This is the first potentially huge difference between Terraform and Pulumi on one hand and Crossplane. 
Terraform and Pulumi are one of tools. They are reacting only when we execute them. Hey, do you want to detect the drift? Yes, you need to execute this command, right? Do you want to know what is missing? What should be changed? What is the difference? What is the drift between the desired and the actual state? You need to execute a command. Neither of those tools are monitoring drifts and reconciling those drifts. Now, of course, I could create a cron job of sorts and execute Terraform apply or pull me up every minute inside of some cluster, and that would fix the problem. But those tools were not designed to detect drifts and synchronize the states automatically all the time continuously. There are tools that are executed when we want them to execute, but not running in a background continuously, at least not by default, at least not as a way that they are designed to perform or to act. Crossplane, on the other hand, is doing that. And it is not doing that because Crossplane is so much better than uh, Pulumi and Terraform, but simply because Crossplane is a Kubernetes resource. It is leveraging all those things that we already have in Kubernetes. Kubernetes engine is designed to detect drifts and to reconcile those drifts and to act whenever something changes when compared to the desired state. I said I want to have a cluster with a node pool, and I will almost always have a cluster with a node pool. It, it does not matter what happens to that cluster. It does not matter whether somebody changes some aspect of that cluster manually. Crossplane is continuously making sure that the desired state and the actual state are synchronized. And it is doing that for a simple reason, because that's the capability of Kubernetes. Kubernetes gives us that, and Crossplane is just tapping into the existing features, existing capabilities of Kubernetes. And this is a round where Crossplane has a clear edge, where it is a clear winner compared to the other two. Now, I must stress again that you could do the same thing with Terraform and Pulumi, but that's not really how they work. They are one-shot, one-off tools, which could be made to run in, in some cron job or something like that to continuously look for the drifts and synchronize them but that's not what they do out of the box. And they're certainly not doing it as well as Kubernetes does. Now let's move into the next round. And that next round is GitOps. Can we apply GitOps principles to any or all of those tools? And by GitOps principles, I mean, I want to store my manifests in a Git repository, and I want to have a process that will always ensure that whatever is in Git is what the actual state is. And on a theoretical level, we could potentially, maybe, apply GitOps with all three tools. We could have a process that is monitoring Git repositories where Terraform manifests are stored and Pulumi code is stored and uh, Crossplane manifests are stored and reconcile those two, right? The desired state in Git and the actual state that is our infrastructure services, what's or not. But that is theory. In practice, for that to happen, Pulumi and Terraform, Pulumi and HashiCorp would need to develop those tools because they are not part of an ecosystem outside of themselves. Crossplane, on the other hand, doesn't need to develop such tools because it can use existing tools. And those existing tools, the leaders right now in GitOps type of market is Argo CD and Flux. And both Argo CD and Flux are Kubernetes type of tools. They will be continuously monitoring Git repository and reconcile what is stored in Git and what the actual state is. But since they are working only inside of Kubernetes, we cannot apply them to Terraform or Pulumi unless either of the two switches to Kubernetes YAML as a way to define their uh, manifests, which is probably not going to happen anytime soon. So those tools will need to develop their own type of GitOps operators running somewhere that would do the same thing. Crossplane wins this one not because Crossplane has the capability to synchronize Git with their manifest, the actual state of their manifest, but because it is part of Kubernetes and we can leverage that ecosystem. We can use Argo CD or Flux or whichever other tool we are using. And let me tell you this, almost all advancements today are happening inside of Kubernetes or around Kubernetes. And that is the advantage that Crossplane is giving us it can plug into Kubernetes ecosystem. And in this case, since we are evaluating GitOps capabilities, it can work with GitOps tools, which happen to be almost entirely or mostly inside of Kubernetes.
Now, the next round is about support libraries and the ecosystem itself. If you take a look at Terraform providers, it is a clear winner. Terraform has more providers and more support for whatever we can think of than any other tool in the market. Terraform support for different providers like AWS, Azure, Alibaba, VMware, you name it, Terraform supports it. So from that perspective, Terraform is a winner. Pulumi is the second best. It is getting there. And Crossplane right now has the least support from internal library perspective. There are fewer things you can do out of the box with Crossplane than with the other two. You will find more examples, uh, blog posts, uh, videos, uh, what's or not for Terraform than for any other tool for a simple reason, because it's the biggest one and it exists longer than any other tool, at least not any other tool, than the other two tools that we are exploring today. Pulumi, just like with the providers, is the second best. It doesn't have as many examples as Terraform, but it has a fair number of them. And then we have Crossplane, which is the newest tool, and uh, there is not much support. You will not find as many resources googling it uh, as for the other two tools. So from that perspective, Crossplane is a loser. but that's not the full picture, because when we are looking for resources, what we can do with which tools we can combine it and so on and so forth, Crossplane is actually in a better position than the other two for the same reason as I mentioned before, because it is part of Kubernetes ecosystem. If you want to use GitOps tools, it's easier with Crossplane than with uh, the other two. If you want to plug it into monitoring, let's say with Prometheus, again, it's easier because monitoring tools today are very much focused uh, towards Kubernetes. Uh, same thing, logging. How do you store logging? How do you ship your logs from those tools? Again, it's easier with Crossplane than with uh, Terraform and Pulumi. They can run in containers, but it's still not the same thing because they are really not Kubernetes native tools. In other words, Terraform wins in the number of providers it supports and the resources it has. Uh, Terraform wins in the number of examples you will find online and discussions and blog posts and what's or not. And Crossplane wins because the ecosystem it uses, the Kubernetes, is larger than any other ecosystem, so there are many more things you can do. The other two are trying to rely on themselves. They're trying to rely on their own communities instead of world as a whole, right? From the perspective of support, the number of libraries, modules, examples, and the ecosystem as a whole, how, what we can do with those things, how we can plug them in the, something wider. Both Terraform and Crossplane are winners, but from very different angles. One is the oldest tool among the three and has the biggest community and support. And Crossplane is part of uh, the biggest ecosystem in the world, which is Kubernetes. Pulumi here loses on both grounds. It is trying to be self-reliant and then it loses from Terraform because Terraform exists longer and it loses from Crossplane because Crossplane is part of the whole Kubernetes ecosystem. So what did we learn? Which one should you be using? I will answer that question later, but now let's summarize the findings so far. From the requirements perspective, Terraform and Pulumi are easier. Or maybe they're not. Let me explain. If you're okay storing state of your resources, of your infrastructure services in cloud, specifically in HashiCorp Cloud and Pulumi Cloud, then those two are definitely easier to set up because for cross-plane, you need a Kubernetes cluster for it to run. How easy or hard it is to set up a cluster where cross-plane will run, either locally or a real cluster, whether part of some other setup or dedicated to cross-plane. Anyways, whether that's hard or easy, I will leave it up to you. I believe it's easy because Kubernetes is commodity today. Anyways, it is definitely more complicated or harder than setting up account in HashiCorp Cloud or Pulumi Cloud. But what if you cannot store the state of your infrastructure in Hashi or Pulumi? What if you have a requirement that such information cannot leave your network? In that case, you would create dedicated storage for Terraform state or Pulumi state. But that can easily become harder than Crossplane because Crossplane relies on Kubernetes and Kubernetes has etcd and the state of Crossplane resources are stored in etcd. That means that cross-plane state 
is automatically distributed, fault tolerant, highly available, what's or not, simply because etcd is all those things. Kubernetes is all those things. If you use your own storage for Terraform and Pulumi, you would need to make sure that you back it up, that you distribute that storage if you need that level of availability and so on and so forth. So it's not that black and white whether crossplane is harder or no, it really depends on your requirements. Still, I will give this one to Pulumi and Terraform uh, because crossplane is slightly more complicated for majority of us because it is more complicated to create a Kubernetes cluster than uh, just signing up for Pulumi or uh, Terraform. Now let's go to the second one, Syntax. And I cannot really say which syntax is better for you, whether you prefer HCL or uh, programming language like JavaScript, what's or not, uh, Go, Python for Pulumi, or you prefer pure YAML. I can give you my personal opinion. Personally, I think that YAML wins for a couple of reasons. From my perspective, HCL from Terraform is just silly. I see no reason to use HCL instead of using pure YAML. YAML is easier to understand. I can give it to anybody. Everybody knows how to read YAML and so on and so forth. I can use Helm if I need to customize to add some kind of templating to that YAML and so on and so forth. And I truly believe that infrastructure is primarily declarative and imperative only when we have to do that. But that might not be the case for you. Maybe you have some weird situation where you need to have a bunch of loops and conditionals and what's or not. And then Pulumi is definitely better because it's easier to do those things in a real language than uh, HCL or, or YAML or what's or not. But I would argue that for majority of us, 99% of us, or 95 maybe, majority of things we do is declarative, and then HCL really makes more sense, and YAML makes more sense than Go or Python or whatever you're using with Pulumi. Nevertheless, it's your choice. You might be the person who has problems looking at HCL and YAML, and you just like looking at Go code or Python. And if you're that person who really hates uh, YAML and HCL and whatever else we use, then hey, Pulumi is just as good as anything else. I mean, it's better than because hey, you can be looking at Go code all the time. The third round was about the ability to provide information about what will happen if we apply uh, changes to some manifests. Terraform and Pulumi are more or less the same. They give you the information, summarized or complete information of all the resources and all the attributes of all the resources that will change or be destroyed or be created. Crossplane doesn't have such a thing. You cannot see what will happen before it happens. So I must give this round to Pulumi and Terraform. They are having an important feature that Crossplane doesn't have. As for CI CD tools, you know, pipelines, workflows, they're all the same. You just execute the command, does not really matter. Then we have drift detection and synchronization. All the tools can detect drift. All the tools will figure out that, hey, this is the desired state, this is the actual state, I need to do this and that to converge one state into another. All three of the tools we explored do that. But only crossplane, at least out of the box, is doing that automatically. Only crossplane will be making sure that the desired state and the actual state are converged almost all the time. To accomplish the same thing with the Terraform or Pulumi, you would need to look for some special tools or maybe create your own cron jobs to make them run every minute or every few minutes. It can be done, but Crossplane does it out of the box. Actually, that's not true. Crossplane is not really doing that. Kubernetes is doing that and Crossplane is running inside of Kubernetes and uh, Crossplane is just leveraging the advantages we have of Kubernetes ecosystem and specifically of Kubernetes scheduler itself. So the winner in this round is without any doubt Crossplane. Crossplane is doing things that we had in the past. Chef and Puppet were doing that automatic synchronization, continuous monitoring of the drifts and so on and so forth. We lost that with Ansible, we lost that with Terraform and Pulumi, but now we're getting back the same feature, just much better because Kubernetes is better than what we had before. But still, we are getting something that we lost. So big thumbs up for Crossplane for having that drift detection and automatic synchronization as part of what Kubernetes is doing for us. How about support and libraries and ecosystem and what's or not? 
Terraform is the tool that exists longer than the other two. It has bigger community, more modules, more examples, more of everything. So it is a clear winner if we look only at that. But support is much bigger than that. Support is about a wider ecosystem. Crossplane is part of Kubernetes and that means that it can leverage its ecosystem. We can use it with Argo CD, we can use it with Flux, we can use it with Istio, we can use it with Prometheus, we can ship logs with the tools that we use to ship logs in Kubernetes and so on and so forth. So both Terraform and Crossplane are more or less on equal footing even though Crossplane came much later than Terraform. And I can only guess that in the future, Crossplane will continue skyrocketing and will continue going much faster than Terraform and Pulumi for a simple reason, because Kubernetes ecosystem is going extremely fast. Crossplane can leverage that advantage. They're not alone, they're part of a much bigger community. Nevertheless, from the support and ecosystem perspective, I give this round to Terraform and Crossplane, and Pulumi is just a loser in this case for a simple reason, because it came after Terraform, has smaller community, cannot leverage a wide ecosystem, and so on and so forth. Now, all those are silly points that do not mean much. I cannot just summarize the points of each and say, hey, this one is a winner because it has more points. It really depends on your specific needs. So let me tell you when you should use one over the other, and so on and so forth. If you want something that is battle tested, that is used by huge amount of teams and companies and organizations, if you want to use something that you know that it works, no matter the limitations or advantages, but it simply works, that's Terraform. Use Terraform if you're not adventurous type. Use Terraform if you're not interested what comes next, what will be the future, but you want a solution that works well today, no fuss, no problems, it just works, that's Terraform. On the other hand, I recommend Crossplane over Terraform if you're recognizing that the future, the present and the future is in Kubernetes. Because it gives us advantages that other tools do not give us. Gives us the advantages to have a single API that manages everything, right? Applications with Kube API, services with Kube API, uh, infrastructure with Kube API. Kube API allows us to manage everything and Crossplane is one of the missing pieces. We have high availability, we have fault tolerance, we have GitOps through Flux and uh, Argo CD and so on and so forth. Kubernetes is huge and if you want to leverage that advantage of a huge ecosystem and apply it not only on the stuff you're doing today with Kubernetes, mostly your applications inside of the cluster, but on a much wider scope, then Crossplane is the thing. Crossplane is a glimpse of the future, and if you want to build your infrastructure based on technology that is coming, instead of technology that is simply here and arguably works, then Crossplane is the one to choose. As long as you're willing to take certain risks, and mainly risks that come from using something that is not used by majority of the world for years already, right? And that leaves us with Pulumi. Should you use Pulumi? Honestly, the only advantage Pulumi has, at least from my perspective, is that you can use general programming language to define infrastructure. I don't buy it. I don't think it's a good idea, but you might have a use case where that is appropriate, or you might be the person who simply doesn't want to see YAML anymore, or uh, you don't like HCL. So if Go is your thing, if JavaScript is your thing, if Python is your thing, or whichever other language Pulumi supports, and you absolutely detest the idea of using HCL or YAML, then Pulumi is the thing. Another thing that goes in favor for Pulumi, which I didn't mention before, is testing. It is much easier to test infrastructure defined through Pulumi than through other tools, simply because it is easier to write tests in a general purpose programming language than outside it and so on and so forth. So testing and general purpose language. If those things are important, use Pulumi. But if they're not, then Terraform is a better solution if you want something that is battle tested and proven to work well. And Crossplane is a solution you should use if you want to see the glimpse of the future and place your bets on what is coming rather than what is. Now, that does not mean that Crossplane is the thing of the future. We don't know that. Uh, it might be replaced by something better later on. But it is almost certain that any foreseeable future will be related one way or another with Kubernetes. And the tools that leverage Kubernetes 
are going to be winners.